All right, here we are looking at my armor set. So this is going to be for rendering and lots of illustration use. So right there, I'm clicking the import model option. Uh, unfortunately, I'm only capturing the Marmoset screen right now, so it's not going to show you my exciting Windows file browser, but that's what my mouse is doing. I'm opening up the scene. So here we go. Here's a character that I made for this demo. Um, she's just a Gundam girl. Um, and you can see that she comes in really shiny because she's coming in with sort of a specular material. So first we want to fix that. Um, that for thing up top is the normal map. So we're going down to the microsurface. We're going to change that from gloss to roughness. And we're going to change this reflectivity from specular to metalness. This way I can plug in my PBR textures. That's physically based rendering. So right now I've clicked in the checker box for the roughness and I'm going through the file browser and I'm clicking in the correct roughness map. Doing the same for the metalness and clicking that in. And as you can see, she looks a lot better or a lot more as intended. This material is for the background asset, and I'm going to do the same thing. Change the microsurface to roughness and reflectivity to metalness. I'm going to browse for the correct maps and put those in. And once I do, it'll start looking more as intended. So there you go. It's already looking really good for our render. But as you can see, I have a different material slot here on the visor. So I'm going to take that material and click the button with the two circles, which will duplicate it. I'm going to click on that and drag it onto that surface. Now this is cool, but I want the visor to be transparent. So I'm going to go down to this transparency property. And as you can see, there's lots of properties you can plug maps into. By default, it's going to use this refraction. So I can play with this value until I get a result I want. There's obviously a lot of extra inputs that can totally be played with. But for now, I can just play with this top value and get the desired result for these renders. Very cool. So here we can go into the sky options. As you can see, there's a lot of preset skies in Marmoset. You can click through the different options and find a lighting setup that works for you for your renders. You can also import your own. You can really see there's a lot of variety packed in with here. The sky will show up in the background all blurred out too, so you can kind of have an idea of where the different colors are coming from. So this option here, the light bulb, will add a light to our scene that's controllable. I do find the controls can be a little bit finicky on the rotation, as you'll see here. But it lets us place a spotlight within our scene to use. Uh, if you want, next to the type under the light setting, you can change this to different types of lights, like um, just a volume light or directional as well. So I have a nice top down light to help add some shadows to the scene. And again, this has a lot of options that you'll see in a lot of 3D packages. Uh, you can play with these until you get the sort of look that you're desiring for your render. Um, definitely worth ex exploring and playing around with. just demonstrating how some of these sliders might affect this light in this particular situation. If we go to the sky, we can also rotate it. 
You can use the up and down arrows, which will rotate by one degree at a time, or you can type in a value. So these sudden transitions in lighting are just happening for me putting in different rotations into the skybox around the asset. If I go to the capture menu and go to settings, I can also change the resolution that my final render will be at. This is for both images and for videos. If I click the transparency tab, my render will have a fully transparent background, which is super useful if I want to put a specific setting behind it, rather than the sort of blue to orange blobiness that you see currently on screen. I can also add a shadow catcher to the scene, which will render for the transparency. Very useful if you need a shadow to put down under a different background, whether it's a forest or a cityscape or even just a colored background for a presentation. When I click on the main camera, I have a lot of options here. The save frame is really useful, as you can see turning it on and off. It gives me a general idea of what will be within my render. Under the post effects, you'll see a lot of stuff from a lot of different 3D packages. These are all things that you could be playing around with in Photoshop, but you can play around with them up here too. And again, just showing what the different bars do to this particular render at this moment. The render settings are accessible through render or through the little icon on the side in the main menu. So again, we can play with a lot of different settings within the render settings. And most of them do exactly what they say. So here I am just putting some of these uh, settings on and off just so you can see sort of how they affect this particular scene. Using global illumination, you can click the show voxels button and play with this slider to make sure that it is fitting correctly within your scene and getting you the result that you're looking for. If you want to add a watermark, though it's easy in Photoshop, you can add it. It's very useful for rendering videos so that you don't need to add it frame by frame or in a compositor. If the sampling size is set to 100, you'll get very good results for your render. And if you click image or image and open, uh, your render will go to whatever your project folder is and it will open automatically once it's complete. Thanks for watching.